I have recently moved from my native country, Ukraine, to Lithuania to study. I traveled here by bus and had to go through four different border checkpoints. Guess which one made me the most anxious? The first one, Ukrainian. Not Belarusian or Lithuanian. Passing my homeland's checkpoint was the peak of my anxiety throughout the trip. Why? Because my government believes I owe them one and a half years of involuntary servitude. And I don't believe so. What up? While you were partying and having premarital sex, I was polishing my moral compass. And it tells me... Fuck forced military service. It's a practice that started long before the common era, when dumbass warlords would throw away people's lives to prove they had slightly above average dicks. Looking a bit closer to our time, in 18th century Russia, compulsory service was for life, basically slavery, until it was generously reduced to 25 years in 1793. Unfortunately, many countries today still haven't figured out slavery is bad, even if it is non-permanent. Let's look at it from a strictly moral perspective. Most moral systems, including mine, are centered around human well-being. So is conscription bad on that basis? Yes, of course. Limiting someone's freedom and forcing them to do stuff, unless it's to protect them from danger, is detrimental to human well-being. Involuntary military service is literally that. And it sure as hell does not protect you from danger. It puts you in danger. Therefore, involuntary military service is a morally negative policy and it should be abolished everywhere. And I do mean everywhere, even in war. Now let's look at some practical arguments. First, arguments in favor of conscription. And why they are shit. Pull it up, Jamie. Daniel, but what if there are literally mega-Nazis waging war on everybody? Who's gonna fight if there's no conscription? We're all gonna die because of you, Daniel. You fucking coward piece of shit. Okay, okay. There will always be voluntary service. Instead of relying on convenient slave soldiers, governments would have to create incentives for volunteers to join the army and also join forces with each other to defeat the mega-Nazis. I know, incentives are hard, forcing people is much easier, but no one said governing would be an easy job, so politicians would have to actually use those overgrown raisins they call their brains. Next. But Daniel, conscription promotes equality and unity, because both the poor and the rich get to serve. You fucking idiot. First of all, in countries like Russia and Ukraine, only the least fortunate sons go to the army. Those who can't afford to pay bribes, have no family connections and disqualifying health conditions. But even if we assume strict enforcement, involuntary servitude is still a fucked up, unacceptable way to promote unity. And I can't see how it would promote equality either, when after serving their time, rich kids would return to their rich families and continue fucking over the poor. In a civilized society, unity and equality are achieved through the correct redistribution of resources so that people can meet their basic needs, and by establishing laws and regulations to, among other things, ensure your rich are not literal gods among men. Next. Daniel, you know, the army makes people stronger physically and mentally. Like, you definitely should be serving right now, you goddamn chicken nugget. First of all, you can't justify forced servitude by saying, but bro, your muscles would get bigger, bro. You can get bigger muscles at home in between getting education or job experience to actually ensure a better future for yourself. Second, while some people do become hardened by the army, because, you know, it's hard, at the same time, many people end up with mental issues or even taking their own life. So that's a shit point. Next. Do you know that military life can teach people useful skills and healthy life habits? Oh, what am I saying? You don't even iron your clothes, you degenerate. He's lying. 
Military service primarily teaches people obedience and suppresses individuality, especially in low military ranks. And while you may get some skills as a side effect, they might not even prove useful to you outside of your military life. And you can also learn most of those skills without wasting your time on salutes and marching techniques. The army is not some summer camp. You don't go there to better yourself. You are training to become a soldier. And soldiers are expected to fight and die to protect the interests of their government. Nothing more. Now let's look at arguments against conscription. Returning to the point about strength, you know that people with serious health problems are disqualified from military service. This means that nationwide compulsory service creates a huge incentive for young people to be sick. They either keep their existing health issues untreated for years or try to get new ones. Any system that makes people excited about being ill is dysfunctional and perverse and must be abolished. Next, the concept of military duty is inconsistent and sexist. Advocates of conscription like to assert that we are indebted to our nations and the only way to truly pay off this debt is to serve in the military to potentially protect it from threats. First of all, you can't be born with a debt. To become indebted, you have to ask and receive someone else's property or service of your own free will. But even if we assume military duty is legit, why don't women serve their time in the military in most countries? Women can aim and shoot just fine, and they're not significantly weaker than men on average. But they're not even required to do alternative service. So what's up with that? But of course, the answer is simple. The debt is nothing more than bullshit the authorities use to guilt trip people into servitude. Men serve in the army because they are expendable. And women don't serve because they are seen as baby factories expected to repopulate the nation in case of military casualties. This is one of the reasons, by the way, why feminists and other opponents of discrimination against men have been fighting military conscription for many decades. Next, forced military service disrupts your life. Conscription affects people at the height of their learning ability and makes them lose time they could have spent becoming more educated and more desirable as an employee. Yes, sometimes you can get a postponement to study, but this varies from place to place and doesn't fit everyone's circumstances. You might not know what you want to study right after school. You might want to drop out and apply for a different program and work in the meantime, etc. In my native country, we only get one chance to complete a university course. After that, no postponement for you, bitch. Also, what if there's no study program for your career of choice? Well, you're fucked, son. Next, conscription hurts the economy. The most physically able and healthy people are taken to serve when they could have been applying themselves in the job market. Let's move along. This last argument I have not seen anywhere, so you can count it as original content. Over-reliance on armies hurts diplomacy and international relations. When politicians have lots of cannon fodder to throw at problems, they don't really need to try hard to reach peaceful outcomes and compromises with other nations or political entities. Have you noticed that almost every time leaders of countries with big militaries try to act strong, lots of people die? If forced military service was abolished and armies were shrinked, this would compel people in power to act more civilized, value peace, and start shoving their enlarged egos deep inside their rectums for the greater good. That's it. Fuck forced military service and its proponents. Hell yeah to freedom and human rights. I'm Daniel, thanks for watching. Never forget to use your head.